Wilson feeling some heat on a blitz. Big flush. In trouble. Big sack! Hit. Sack! Wilson in trouble. Stepping up. Wilson. Sack! Hit. Sack! Oh, Bumble, yeah, there it is. Tight there ball! It is. There it is. Mario Edwards Jr. Demarcus Walker! Dylan Cole! Weaver had the sack! Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. I'm Mike Keith, and sitting in for the head coach tonight on a short week is Titans general manager John Robinson. Our conversation is going to revolve around 48 hours ago and 48 hours from now when the Titans play at Green Bay on Thursday night football. But starting with 48 hours ago, a hard-fought, rock'em, sock'em game with the Denver Broncos. We knew how good they were on defense. They lived up to it, but the Titans found a way. Yeah, a lot of back and forth there, Mike. Um, offensively, defensively, and special teams. It was really a good example of complementary football. Um, you know, special teams getting some field position for the defense to get some stalls. And then offense finding ways throughout the course of the game uh, to make yards in crucial situations and come away with points. The Denver Broncos dominated the first 27 minutes and 37 seconds of the game. They'd outgained the Titans 4-1. to one. They're up 10 to nothing. The Titans trying to get something started on offense. And you get the drive going in the last part of the first half. And that turns the whole game around. Yeah, it was really critical to come away with some points there right before half. Kind of swung the momentum. Uh, got some positivity going into halftime uh, that we could come back out, build on that, you know, and finish the game strong there at the end. We'll start there with the six-pack because Denver's defense, number one in the NFL in the red zone, it's third down and nine, and the Titans come through with a play. Nick westbrook Akine. Yeah, just a really great catch uh, by Nick to start with. Got both feet down. Uh, caught it out in front of his eyes. You know, they sent a six-man pressure on this. It's a great job by the offensive line uh, of picking that up along with Hooper and Hilliard in there. And then Tannehill standing in there. There was a little bit of pressure late, but he stood in there tall and delivered a great pass. Yeah, Nick Westbrook Aquinas' first touchdown of the year. It's 10 to 7 at the half. We go to the third quarter. How about another NWI score on the return to sender? Yeah, we had kind of started this drive. This was a three-play drive. We started off with Derek. He kind of banged a run in there, and then and then uh, Burks caught a 15-yard pass. Uh, we set it up, you know, with another run. O-line did a great job of selling uh, the run look on it. Nick did a great job of selling like he was going to block, and then burst into the outside. Again, Ryan stood in there, did a great job of finding him, uh, let the pressure kind of settle, and, and then delivering a the ball. Great job by Derek selling the run, getting the ball back to Tannehill. Uh, and then him slinging it down there. And then the run after the catch, uh, Nick did a great job of setting the safety up. Uh, and Woods did a great job of pulling the safety across, you know, on, a, on an over route. Uh, but really selling the outside, then cutting back across uh, and finishing in the end zone for another big score. A career day for Nick Westbrook Akine. Five catches, 119 yards, and two touchdowns. At that point, the Titans take a lead that they will not lose in the ball game, largely thanks to defensive pressure from people like Dylan Cole. Yeah, really good job by the front here. We had a three-man look uh, heavy to one side, and Edwards was solo on the other side. You can see him there. He jumps over the cut of the running back, uh, and it kind of flushes Wilson out a little bit. Uh, Cole converted from coverage to rush, um, saw an opportunity, uh, shot through there, and got Wilson on the ground. A huge play for us uh, there in the, in the quarter. Titans end up the game with six sacks. That's not the last one we'll see. But how about another big pass play to set up the final field goal? Tannehill to the rookie, Chigakonkwo. Yeah, really good protection by the offensive line. I thought the tackles did a great job of pushing the rush, you know, outside. Again, Ryan did a great job. Uh, there was a linebacker kind of hanging right there in the middle of the field. Great ball placement uh, by Ryan. Great route by Chig. Uh, he got it over the linebacker. Chig caught it out in front of himself. 
um, and then takes off running. And you know, you'll see later in the play here, Dontrell Hilliard blocking downfield uh, on, on Sertan, uh, gets Chig probably another extra five or 10 yards. Sets up the field goal that gives the Titans a seven point lead at 17 to 10. But Tennessee has to withstand one more Russell Wilson assault. You knew it was coming. Third and four at the Titans 21. And here comes Rashad Weaver. Yeah, you know, really good uh, coverage. This one, the coverage really helped uh, the rush. There really wasn't a whole lot of places to go with the football. Um, we get some pressure from the left side um, there with uh, Sam O. Uh, kind of pushes Wilson back a little bit. It's a great swim move uh, by Weave on the tackle. You know, coming around, finishing on the quarterback, knocking the ball loose. Uh, and we're, you know, half a second away from recovering the fumble there and really ending the game. All right, but it doesn't quite end the game. The Denver Broncos get one more play on fourth down, and one of the heroes of the ball game is Terrence Mitchell. He secures the catch to secure the win. Yeah, and this one is when the, the rush really affected the play. Uh, the last play, the coverage helped the rush. This one, the rush helped the coverage. Uh, great job by Danico working the guard there. Um, kind of flushed uh, Wilson up into the pocket. Mario Edwards comes back in late, pushes Russell up into the pocket. You see he peeks over at Edwards and sees him, and then he just kind of launches it. Uh, Kalu does a great job tipping it up, and then T. Mitch comes away with the pick. And that's it. Titans win 17-10 to with a defense that played a lot of guys that you might not know. Maybe not household names, but they've done a good job for the Titans this year. We'll tell you who are these guys when the Mike Vrabel Show returns from the Bet MGM studio presented by Shift 4 next. Who are these guys? That's what we're going to talk about in this segment of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel on this short week for the Titans. Very proud of a lot of guys who have stepped up on defense this year in tough situations. Let's start with safety Andrew Adams, who was a guy that you signed off of Pittsburgh's practice squad. Yeah, he spent training camp with the New York Giants. We had kind of watched him. He was with Tampa uh, before that. Uh, was undrafted out, out of UConn. Uh, we kind of had him as a guy that was earmarked to kind of keep tabs on and then you know, we had a roster need and, and stayed in contact with his with his representatives and offered him an opportunity here. And, you know, he's come in and filled in and done a really nice job for us. Had a huge play in the Colts game a couple weeks back and you know, just continues to improve week in and week out. Dylan Cole is not a new player at linebacker. He's been on the roster, but certainly getting more of an opportunity in 2022 than ever before. Yeah, it was primarily a special teams player for us. Uh, another undrafted player played at Missouri State. I uh, spent a lot of time with Houston. We played against him. Uh, and some opportunities have presented themselves here for him on the defensive side of the ball. Continues to do some really good things on special teams. Had a big hit Sunday uh, in the Denver game. Uh, but really proud of Dylan and what he's been able to capitalize on. Titans fans excited about Mario Edwards Jr., a guy who's been in the league for a while. You signed him off Jacksonville's practice squad. Yeah, it was originally it was a second round pick uh, by the Oakland Raiders when the Raiders were still out in Oakland. Uh, he's bounced around with a couple teams. Um, ended up on, on Jacksonville's practice squad. Was kind of a tweener as a defensive end, defensive tackle. You know, we had him earmarked. Uh, talked to him and about you know the opportunity that he had here and. Um, another guy that's really stepped up and really seized that opportunity. Saw him in our last segment, Terrence Mitchell, eight tackles in the ball game, three passes defensed, and that INT that ended it. Yeah, T. Mitch, another journeyman. He's played for a lot of teams. He was originally a seventh round pick out of Dallas. Uh, spent some time in Houston, actually, uh, with uh, Coach Midget, our secondary coach. Um, he was on. I thought he had a great camp in uh, in uh, New England on, on the preseason, the preseason games. Uh, had a had a need at corner. Uh, he was the best guy out there and. Uh, brought him in here, and, and he's really, he's always got a smile on his face, bouncing around, and uh, likes playing for us. Demarcus Walker is a defensive lineman you targeted in the offseason for a specific reason that is helping you now. Yeah, he played for Houston last year. They used him kind of similar to how we're using him as a defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, started out in Denver, um, but he's really come on and, and, and earned more playing time here. He's gotten better over the last couple weeks, he's factored a lot more ton of energy uh, has stepped up as one of the leaders on the defense. Another guy who's playing big right now for the Titans, certainly did yesterday, Nick Westbrook Akine. You know his story maybe, but we're going to make sure you know the full story of NWI as he is our genuine Titan this week. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Nick Westbrook Akine is a guy that Titans fans know in his third year. He made this team as an undrafted free agent. He's caught 53 overall passes, six of them going for touchdowns. He made his mark on special teams as he gets started for the club. But in this week's Epic Western Genuine Titans segment, Amy Wells takes us through the story of NWI on the field and the special guy that he's always been off the field. You see the plays on Sundays. Receivers to the right. We're going to give Henry a turn. He pitches it back to Tannehill. He throws deep right side. There's Westbrook. Akita, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, yeah, end zone. Yeah. Touchdown! Tight. And sometimes it's easy to forget that before the bright lights in the packed stadiums of the National Football League, before the roaring fans and tradition of the Indiana Hoosiers, Nick Westbrook Akine was just Nick, a wide receiver for the Lake Mary Rams. The tall kid from Central Florida made an impression early in his career, really early. Well, it's funny because Nick came to one of our youth camps as a little kid. So we saw him like in third grade and he stood out then even. It, it's, you know, he's a tall kid, had good hands and we're like, okay, we can't wait for this guy to get here. So he got as a freshman, he came out and, uh, just was a great receiver for the freshman team. And then at the end of the freshman season, he's one of the kids that we brought up to the varsity level. Um, and, you know, the, the rest is history. Probably his sophomore year, you know, he started to stand out. He started for us as a sophomore. And uh, there were times it was just, you know, whenever we needed a first down, it's throw it to Nick. Throw it to Nick. It's third and long, throw it up to Nick, and he'll, he'll make it happen. And uh, we had a quarterback. Uh, who was pretty good at the time, who, who could buy him some time and run around with his feet a little bit and, and, and get on the edge and uh, allow Nick to go deep and just loft it up there to him. There's some times, one play in particular stands out. Uh, we are in a, a game against uh, Oviedo and Nick Westbrook was, was right down there in the middle of the end zone. And we Oviedo had a guy on each side and a guy in front. And Nick just goes up between all three of them and grabs the ball. I mean, it's just, you're like that, that doesn't happen every day. So but I'd say that point <laughs> as a 10th grader, we knew. It wasn't just his athleticism that stood out. Nick Westbrook Akine was as good a person as he was an athlete. And that's saying something because NWI was a great athlete. In his time at Lake Mary High School, he set school records for career, single season, and single game receiving yards. He also holds the school's touchdown record. As a senior, he caught 84 passes for 1,853 yards and 21 touchdowns. It always feels good to win. It always feels good to win. Records are broken and stats come and go. He, he's just such a good kid. He was just so nice to everybody. He was in the, the best buddy program that helped kids that were special needs kids. And he, uh, AP classes, smart, a yes sir kid. All his teachers loved him. I mean, he was a leader in the weight room. He had tremendous work ethic. Uh, the stats will be broken, you know. Eventually, someone's going to come along and break some of those records. But uh, what stands out is just the quality of person that he is. He was such a high quality person that he was recently inducted into the Lake Mary Hall of Fame. The honor recognizes alumni who have achieved greatness and who represent the values of a Lake Mary student. That is Nick Westbrook Akine. Now as a Titan, he has continued down the same path. After being brought in as a rookie free agent, he earned a starting role in just two years. He has become a leader within the receiver's room. Yeah, Nick is, every year he's consistently grown in one area or another. Uh, smart football player, uh, really disciplined, uh, fundamentals. Um, you know, when you, when you if you can have a poster child of somebody who does everything right, that, that's, that's who it would be. And he has still found time to invest in the Nashville community, continuing the tradition that he started as a kid at Lake Mary High School. We, of course, we, we always, you know, with social media now, you can always find a highlight of him doing something, and especially when he was in Indiana. We, we always found highlights and linked them to him and, and uh, said, hey, watch this. And, that's the type of kid, type of play we want you to make, and that's the type of person we want you to be. We, we always talk about that. 
He is a favorite around Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, and you see that in his high school Hall of Fame already in Lake Mary, Florida, a graduate of the Kellogg School of Business at Indiana University, um, a guy that sort of fits the bill of what we call a genuine Titan. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd be echoing a lot of things that was said there about him. I mean, he's, he's, he's been consistent ever since he came here as a rookie free agent. Uh, there's been no job that's too big for Nick to take on. There's been no task that's asked of him that's too small uh, for him to say, let me do that, whether it's be a gunner on the punt team, whether it's run down on kickoff, uh, line up in the slot, line up at outside, block, um, catch, run. You know, he's just been a, he's a great teammate. And uh, I know the guys really look up to him and the way that he approaches his job on a day in and day out basis. Good job, Amy Wells. That was fun to watch. Nick Westbrook, Akine, our epic Western genuine Titan. We're going to know our foe coming up. The Green Bay Packers 48 hours away. John Robinson takes us through them next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. John Robinson sitting in for the head coach because of Thursday night football in Green Bay. Let's know our foe. Guess who we're going to start with? I bet you know Aaron Rodgers. You understand who he is. Coming off the comeback win over the Cowboys, Aaron Rodgers got them going, even though he threw only 20 passes. Yeah, I mean, just an outstanding uh, player. I mean, he's been the MVP about 47 times. Um, you know, great arm, great vision. I mean, the things that he does uh, with his eyes, man manipulating the coverages, um, getting the ball out quick. He can still run uh, to escape pressure, um, get the ball down the field. He's got some weapons, you know, with Lazard and those guys. He's starting to get it to those guys. Um, so it's uh, he's, he's a premium player at this league, even at his age. But the running backs, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, a one-two punch with a lot of physicality. Great tandem there. Yeah, great tandem. They're really different stylistically, uh, but they run the same plays. Um, Jones is a cut and slash guy. I mean, he can be in one hole uh, one minute and the next he's out the back door and gone. He can circle up the defense, uh, catches the ball really well. You know, he's a viable target for, for Aaron out of the backfield. He runs hard. He's got great vision. He's got burst. And then you've got Dylan, the big guy. You know, they hand it to him. Um, it takes more than one guy to usually bring him down because if it's one guy, he's dragging him. Um, but a big, powerful back, thick, um, and, and can really move the sticks. He actually had against the Titans two years ago, 124 yards rushing. On defense, Quay Walker, the youngster out of Georgia, off to a good start. And Jair Alexander in the secondary leads him with three picks. Yeah, Quay's really fast, really active player. You know, they've got a good front up uh, with, with Clark in the middle, uh, Preston Smith on the edge. But Quay's an active player. He's good against the run. He's athletic in, in the coverage part where he can get to a lot of the middle of the field stuff. Um, it, it, he's a good tackler. He's a smart player. You can tell he played at a really good program, you know, like Kirby runs down there at Georgia. And Alexander, excellent mover, excellent ball skills. Um, he, he's got a real knack for making plays on the football. All right, we're back with our Nissan Keys to Success for knocking off the Packers as we wrap up the Mike Vrabel Show next. Mike Vrabel show presented by Shift 4 shifts now to our Nissan Keys to Victory in 48 hours in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Titans got to tackle. I mean, we showed those backs. You got to get them on the ground. Yeah, I mean, and they're, they're different. You know, we talked about it with Dylan being the heavier downhill back. You got to gang tackle that guy. Uh, with Jones, you, you've got to come to balance, you, you know, because if you try to go too aggressive at him, uh, he'll be around you in a heartbeat. Uh, Tanya, the tight end, is a big, strong runner. Uh, Lazard, the receiver, is a big, strong runner. Christian Watson's a really fast player who had, you know, three touchdowns in the Dallas game. Uh, so we've got to do a really good job of getting these guys on the ground when the opportunity presents itself. And important to keep in mind on a short week, your tackling technique is really important because you're naturally going to be a little tired. Yeah, it gets preached uh, every single week in team meetings, you know, how you miss tackles and how you prevent those missed tackles constantly reinforcing how we want to get these guys on the ground. All right, let's go to key number two in our Nissan Keys. And this is all about Lambeau. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a historic place. It's Thursday night. It's primetime football. Uh, it's two good, good football teams. It's the only show uh, in town. 
Um, you know, that's, that place is, is packed. It's a very unique place uh, when you go in there, just the history and the lore around that stadium. You know, their fans, they'll be greased up on Milwaukee's best, and they'll be playing <laughs> House of Pain, uh, jumping around. We've got to handle all that stuff. It's going to be cold. Uh, got to handle the, all the elements uh, and be ready for what we're walking into. And then Nissan key number three is about what the Titans do when they play well, and that's play complimentary football. It is. You know, we saw it in the Denver game. We've seen it in, you know, in games this year. It's special teams. It's offense. It's field position with the special team. Offensively, it's about getting into drives, sustaining drives, scoring in the red zone. Uh, and defensively, it's forcing them to punt, getting the ball back to the offense uh, so that we can get into drives and get going. Thanks for sitting in for the head coach. We'll see you in Green Bay. See you in Green Bay, Mike. All right, we're on the air at 6 Central Time on 104.5 The Zone Thursday night. Hope you'll join us. Thanks for being with us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4.